In today's chess video, we are going to look at some amazing chess opening tricks and tactical ideas in the Danish Gambit. We start with the king's pawn opening, e4, e5, followed by d4, which is the center game. The most common reply from black is to take this pawn, which is the accepted line. Then c3, we sacrifice another pawn, black takes, and then we go for bishop c4. c takes b2, and bishop takes on b2. This is the Danish Gambit accepted line. As you can see, we gave up two pawns in return for this very attacking position. Both our bishops are eyeing down the king side. This bishop is attacking this weak f7 square, and this bishop is attacking the g7 square, making it difficult for this black bishop to move. Although the Danish Gambit is not that popular at the GM level, but it can still be a good opening to try out, especially against beginner or even intermediate level players especially in blitz or bullet formats because many of the opponents are not quite prepared for such an aggressive opening. If you're someone who likes to attack right from the start and don't mind giving away a slight material advantage, then you should definitely try out this opening. So in this video, we'll discuss first some very important concepts and tactical ideas for white. Then we will look at some common variations to see how you can apply these tactics in your games and then finally, we will look at how you can respond as black if your opponent tries to play this opening against you. As white, you need to keep in mind a few things. First one is that since you're already two pawns down, you should try not to exchange pieces. Second, you should be super aggressive and try to avoid playing any passive moves. You should try not to give your opponent any chance to develop his pieces and get after his black king right away. Third, since this is going to be an open game, your bishops are very important. Try not to exchange them. Another thing is that in such an opening, there might be situations where you must bring out your queen early to attack the opponent. So don't hesitate with that, it's completely fine. Specifically in this type of game, you will get good opportunities to sacrifice your bishop like this and expose the black king, so always be on the lookout for the right opportunity. Also, sooner rather than later, you will see knight f6, to which your response in most cases should be to push this pawn forward and force this knight to move again or even try to trap it. In such a game, generally this d file is very critical because it will soon open up and you might find some good opportunities to launch discovered attacks and attack black queen, so keep an eye on that as well. Alright, now let's look at how you can use these ideas to your advantage in some common variations. In this position, if black goes for d6, then knight f3, and then if he goes for bishop g4, trying to pin this knight, then it's a big mistake. Can you see why? We can go for the bishop sacrifice that I mentioned earlier. Bishop takes with check, king takes, and now you have this smart little tactic. Knight to e5 check, black can't take with this pawn because then he will lose his queen. Therefore, he is forced to move his king, and then you can simply capture his bishop. You like this move, right? Then you should hit the thumbs up button below and like this video as well. Okay, moving on, let's look at another popular line. Knight c6, knight f3, and knight f6. All normal development moves. Then we push e5, as we discussed earlier. Knight e4 saves the knight. Again, the same idea, bishop f7 check. Black takes, and this time we have queen d5 check. And after the king moves, we simply gobble up this knight. As you can see, the material is almost equal, but black's king is fully exposed, and he has also lost his right to castle, so this should be a good game for you. Going back, another famous line goes as follows. Queen g5, threatening to take this pawn. Then knight f3, enticing black to go ahead. If he falls for this and takes this pawn, then he's gone. Let me show you how. After queen takes, we have rook g1 attacking the queen. He has to play queen h3. Now we use the same idea. Bishop takes f7 check. He cannot take the bishop because after knight g5, he loses his queen. Therefore, in this position, he will have to go for something like king d8. Then we have this brilliant rook g7 move, and if he takes the rook, then we take his bishop, 
and later we can also capture his rook. Going back, if he does not take the rook, then he must move his knight because it is attacked twice by a rook and bishop. After knight e7, we can throw another double attack by playing rook g3, which ends up winning his rook or queen. Okay, now let's go back and look at another variation. Here we have bishop b4 check. We block with the knight, then knight f6 attacking the pawn. Pawn to e5 as usual, knight e4 attacking this knight, and again we go for bishop f7 check. If king takes bishop, then queen b3 check. We regain the bishop and also end up with a solid positional advantage. Going back, in this position, if king does not take, then we have bishop a3 forcing him to take, followed by knight takes, king takes bishop, and then queen b3 check, forking the king and bishop. Ultimately, the material is almost equal, but we have a much better position as white. Okay, now let's look at another variation which starts with d5. This is called the Sklector defense. We take the pawn and now if black is not careful and plays a random move like c6 attacking the bishop, then bishop f7 check. He can't take the bishop because his queen is hanging, so he must play king e7. But then we can simply play bishop a3 check, forcing him to move his king away, grabbing his queen. Okay, now you might be wondering, how do you play this as black? I mean, how can you stop white from inflicting any damage? Well, the best way to counter this opening is the selector defense. But you need to know the correct way to play it. After d5 and bishop takes d5, your best move as black would be knight f6. Now this bishop f7 move doesn't work anymore because after king takes, queen takes, black can play bishop b4 check, launching a discovered attack on the queen. Ultimately, white loses his queen and after all this, if you look at the position, black ends up with a slight advantage. As black, you also have the option to simply avoid this gambit right from the start. After the initial moves, on move 3, instead of taking the pawn, you can simply decline the gambit and play d5, which is the Capablanca defense. The material remains equal, but you prevent white from playing an attacking game. Okay, so here's a chess puzzle for you all. It is white's turn and you need to find the best move continuation for white. Do share your answers in the comment section below. If you like this, then you should definitely watch this video as well, which is all about the Sicilian defense. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking here. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.